Hello and welcome to another edition of Middle Earth Friday. This is episode 56 for March 9th, 2018. And today I'm going to be talking to you about OData filtering using Microsoft Flow. And this is also applicable for Azure Logic Apps. T typical disclaimer, while I'm a Microsoft employee, the views expressed during this content are my own. And in this episode, I want to highlight two different subjects. The first being an upcoming MVP Days presentation that I want to make you aware of. Then we'll get into the OData queries. So MVP Days, this is a community initiative. I've spoken at it before. It's completely virtual. It's free. You can go ahead and register at mvpdays.com. It's going to be on March 14th. And for this session, I'm teaming up with a colleague, John Levesque. And we are presenting at 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Mountain Time. If you can't make it, these sessions are recorded and will be available online after. Now, I do highly recommend you check out this session. I think John and I have put together a really unique session with some interesting topics around Microsoft Flow. And uh, here's just a little sample of uh, some of the stuff that we got into. Hello and welcome to MVP Days. My name's Kent Weir. I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Flow team. And I'm the Flow Bro. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we had a great time putting that together. And if you're a fan of the TV show Silicon Valley, I highly suggest you watch this session. And during the session itself, both John and myself will be online and we will be live tweeting. So if you have any questions during or after the event, feel free to reach out to us at our Twitter handles. So let's dive into today's content, which is around filtering data with O data. Now, if you're not familiar with OData, it is a standard, an OASIS standard that establishes best practices for designing RESTful APIs. And one of the core capabilities of OData is the ability to filter data using a standardized method. So much like when you're querying a database, uh, like say SQL Server, you've got T-SQL, and there's basically a language built around that. Well, you can think of OData as something similar, the difference being it applies to RESTful web services. So whether or not you are calling in a vendor provided OData service or RESTful API, or you are calling a custom one, you can go ahead and use the same query language in order to restrict the amount of data that returns to your request. So if you're interested in more details or want to read more details, you can go ahead and check out the flow of the week. Here's the data set that we will use for the first couple of examples. And this is just a regular SQL Azure table. And the scenario is we want to be able to get rows from SQL Server and filter on customer name. So in this case, we want to filter on Contoso. Currently with Microsoft Flow and Azure Logic Apps, there's no ability to provide just a raw query um, into the connector itself. You're typically dealing with a stored procedure if you want an exact filter. Um, so what you're left with is either stored procedure or you can now use OData, and that's the purpose of, of this particular session is we're going to focus on, on OData. Now, how you use OData is there is a filter query text box, and we're going to go ahead and provide the statement of customer name equals Contoso, and we're going to wrap Contoso in single quotes since this is a string. If we did want to just do restrict the number of columns or the specific columns or fields, we could go ahead and, and apply that here. But in this case, we really want to filter on, on data based upon essentially a where clause. And in this case, our where clause is customer name EQ Contoso. And what you'll find is that EQ is the equivalent of the equals operator inside of T-SQL. So when we go ahead and run this query, we're actually going to get our result. And before I get into my results, I want to make sure you're aware of a capability called create HTML table, which allows you to take a response back from say a previous action, such as like the SQL connector. And you have the ability to construct basically an HTML message or make it a little bit prettier. So what we can do is we can go ahead and use the create HTML action. We can choose to include headers and we can automatically have the headers assigned based upon the data coming back, or we can actually go ahead and type in our actual headers and provide our own values. Now you can't actually include a space, so that's why I've got these dashes here. 
um, but you can still get descriptive titles out or headers. And then in addition, you go ahead and select using dynamic data, the actual field that you want included. So here I'm including city, but I also can include customer name, work order ID and work order creation date time. And as you can see, my result set, I'm only getting records back where customer name equals Contoso. So there we go, like that's as simple as it is uh, when you want to actually just go ahead and filter upon a column such as customer name. Now moving on, let's go into our second scenario which is getting rows from SQL Server once again, but this time we wanna go ahead and filter on a date, which in this case is represented by work order create time. And this is a very common pattern, but it's also uh, a scenario that comes up in a lot of customer requests or just on the forums where there people tend to run into challenges really related to date time formats and casting essentially. But in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna be able to return records that are within 30 days of today's date. Now, as I mentioned in the last slide, some people run into issues here as an actual stack overflow case where someone is having trouble actually applying O data inside of a logic app using the SQL connector. And the real trick here is to use a column called date time offset instead of just date time. And that would allow you to get through without any of these time conversion issues. Uh, the author in this, or I guess the person who's provided the solution in this post also offers a few other suggestions. So go ahead and check it out if changing a column uh, data type is not an option. Now the expression that we're going to provide here is we're going to use our work created time is greater than, and then we need to use a function because we need to determine what was the date 30 days ago. And we can go ahead and use a couple different functions in order to derive this. So number one, we'll go ahead and use UTC now and we'll provide just a date format for uh, the current date. Then what we'll do is we'll add minus 30 days to today's date. And then what we're gonna see is we're gonna wanna find any records that are greater than the date that was 30 days ago. So here we're using a combination of OData plus the expressions that are available in the Logic Apps workflow definition language. Now when we go ahead and run this, we will find all work orders that are greater than 30 days ago. And in this case, it was 30 days ago from February 28th when I originally built out this solution. Moving on to scenario three, now we're going to change the connector and we're going to use Dynamics 365. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and provide a query that uses an AND clause. Now, as you can see in the active accounts, I've got Contoso Hospital, Contoso Hospital, and I can see that they're the accounts are in two different cities. One's in Seattle, one's in Phoenix. Now I'm interested in Contoso Hospital, records where the account name is Contoso Hospital, and I'm only interested in them if the city is equal to Phoenix. So in this case, I'm going to provide a name, which is the underlying name of the account name field that comes from Dynamics 365. And we're gonna go ahead and check to see if it's equal to Contoso Hospital and the address one underscore city is equal to Phoenix. And when this happens, only the Katoso Hospital record for Phoenix is returned. So that's an example of how we can use AND clauses in order to string these different criteria sets together. And lastly, scenario four, and we're gonna use SharePoint Online for this specific scenario, is we want to list records from SharePoint Online that start with a specific token. Now, as you can see, we've got four records here, and the first three all start with Contoso. The last one starts with Fabricant. So in this case, I can't say where site name equals Contoso because I want to include all three records. So I can use the starts with function, and that'll return these three records for us. Here, it's as simple as starts with then I need to provide the column name, which in this case is title, and I would then need to provide the token that I'm looking for. And in this case, it's just single quotes, Contoso, and then what will happen is we will see just the records that begin with Contoso. 
So hopefully that provided you a very quick but useful example of how you can use OData inside Flow or Logic Apps. Now here's a couple tips. One is be careful with field names. So we saw a couple examples here. The first one was this one, was SharePoint. So in this case, we've got a label called site name, but the actual field that has been used underneath this site name, site name is basically a label, is actually called title. Um, that wasn't by design, that was just the way it worked, um, you know, in terms of reusing an existing SharePoint library. Now the other one that's interesting is this account name, right? Same thing, Dynamics 365, the account name is, or the label is account space name. But underneath the hood, and this is out of the box, out of the box attribute as part of the out of the box account entity, it's actually called name. So don't make any assumptions around the names of fields. I suggest that you go ahead and run your flow through first without any filters so that you can get the exact shape of the message and know exactly what the field names are going to be returned. And another thing you will find, especially with SharePoint, is you will find that these names can be very different. So for example, if you use something like site space name as when you go ahead and create the field, SharePoint may also stick in this X0020, which represents a space character, as part of the field name. So something uh, a former colleague always taught me when, when building out SharePoint solutions was you always create the column names without spaces. And then what you can go ahead and do is rename them after. And when you rename them, what happens is you're not actually changing the underlying, underlying field name in the database, you're only changing the label. And that's exactly what we saw here, where this column was originally called title, and then someone's come along and renamed it to site name, yet underneath the hood, it's still called title. So that's something to be aware of when it comes to OData. Next, there's uh, many, many other expressions that are available. So here I've used a tiny URL, it does link you off to a Microsoft document, but it will go through all of the different filter expressions. And since this is all standardized on OData, these should all work inside of Flow and Logic Apps. So that concludes the content for today's episode. Thanks BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. If you haven't signed up for Integrate in London, I suggest you check that out, biztalk360.com. Uh, BizTalk360 always has early bird specials, so you can go ahead and save some cash. I will be there. I'll be talking about Microsoft Flow, and I uh, look forward to seeing you there. Steph Jan has next week's episodes. Uh, he is going to be in Seattle for MVP Summit uh, the week of the 5th, so we'll probably do some collaborations on content, and those should be published soon. So take care, and we'll see you again on Middleware Friday. Thank you.